Hey gang, it's Nick Howell, the Data Center Dude, here to talk to you about hooking up iTunes with a Synology. Now, the post last week detailed the infrastructure and the way late things got laid out, but many of you got back to me and said, Hey Nick, how are you actually running iTunes on a Synology? Because that's not supposed to be supported, right? Right. So let's do some explaining first to kind of set the stage where things are at. Apple's done a really good job of maintaining that in a proprietary way and not allow, allowing other things to act as iTunes servers. So in order to have one of the better experiences, one of the more native experiences, I'll say, it's subjective whether it's better or not. It's my preferred method of doing it. I already had another Mac device, a Mac Mini, that uh, you're current, currently seeing on the screen here as a screen sharing, sharing session. Say that three times real fast. Uh, running iTunes. As I said in the previous post, that is its job. That's what it does. It's meant to sit here and run iTunes. So at the end of the day, uh, it doesn't do too much. It's got a couple of other little utilities on it down here at the bottom that uh, we'll go over here in a second. But this is this is basically what happens. There's an iTunes always running on my network that Apple TV can access, that my MacBook Pro can access, that my iDevices can access. At the end of the day, it's done. I already had this. The only difference, I was using an, a USB drive instead of before I had the Synology. So let's talk about migrating things around. First things first, uh, in order to get everything onto the Synology the right way, it's a real quick process to do that. First of all, make sure you're running the latest version of iTunes. Um, make sure that that's updated and ready to go and that you're not going to um, you know, run into any problems with compatibilities and whatnot. The second thing you need to know is that usually your iTunes library is stored in your user profile uh, music, iTunes, iTunes Media, and you'll see all these files. You'll see all these files, actually. These are the files that you need. So I have a NAS share mounted to my Mac Mini uh, that is shared across the network, and I have an iTunes folder inside of that share. I moved all of my content, all of my movies that were already populated on the USB drive. I just shut down iTunes, selected this entire array right here, and dragged it over to the iTunes folder between Finder windows. That was it. That was the hardest part of this whole process because it had to sit there for two days and run because my library is about 1.5 terabytes right now. Once that's done, let me close iTunes and give you an example of how this works here. Uh, instead of just regularly clicking on iTunes, hold down the Option key and click on the iTunes icon. Now what you're going to get is this new Choose iTunes Library folder or uh, option. So we have the ability to just quit out of it if we don't want to. We can create a new library if the one goes corrupt, which is a whole other tutorial in itself. But what we want is to choose a library. What we're going to do is point it to this ITL file that's on our NAS share, on our Synology share, whatever you've named it, uh, and mount, have it mounted up. Go to your wherever you copied all those files. Remember this whole structure I told you to move. Grab this, point it to this ITL file, and click open. Now, I'm gonna not going to do this because I think it, I don't want it to trash mine or duplicate everything. What this is is it's a, uh, a universal descriptor for all of the stuff that's in here, all of your album artwork, all of the XML data that contains all the metadata, track name and artist and year, release year and all those sorts of things are stored in the XML, and then the ITL references it uh, as, a, in a way, a fingerprint over the entire layout of your iTunes library. If you hit open right here, it's just going to reopen everything in iTunes. There's not going to be processing or transcoding or moving or any of that stuff. Here's the other cool thing that it does. Let me just get mine back open here real quick. And you can see my library there. If we go into iTunes, Preferences, and Advanced, what we're going to look at here is the iTunes Media Folder Location. Now, if you follow those steps that I just told you, this folder location should update automatically for you. You should not have to change this. There's some other tutorials floating around out there that will tell you to come in here and change all of this stuff first and let iTunes move the library. Well, that used to be the way we had to do it a few years ago, four or five years ago. Now, it's the ITL file and the XML have gotten so robust that you can literally just point to the IT option, click iTunes, point to the ITL file, and everything's done. And it will persist that way going forward unless you don't have your NAS drive mounted for whatever reason. The other two things to look at here is the Keep iTunes Media Folder Organized and Copy Files to the iTunes Media Folder when adding to library. So I wanted to give you a quick little demo here of how those work and how those come into play. Uh, I went out and grabbed a copy of my favorite childhood movie known as The Wizard. 
those of you that aren't familiar with this movie, it's Fred Savage at his, you know, or in the early years when he was high on the Wonder Years. And uh, it was a movie about a Nintendo tournament, which, you know, if, if you were a kid of the 80s like I was, uh, it was all about the NES, the NES. So a couple of tools I want to show you real quick. Uh, the first one is a conversion tool similar to Handbrake. It looks a lot like Handbrake, doesn't it, if you've used Handbrake before. The difference between this and Handbrake is that Handbrake is a transcoding utility. It will literally stream bit by bit the entire film from one format to another and do a full copy of it, right? MP4 tools, what I've found, uh, takes, doesn't have to go through a transcoding process. MKV and MPEG and AVI uh, and MP4 are all different types of containers uh, of descriptor files that, can, that describe and um, attach to the content within those files. That's a very basic way of describing it. But think of them as all doing the same thing, just in a different way. MP4 Tools is a uh, you know freeware utility that's out there. All you have to do is Google search for it, and you'll find it. Uh, what it does is it modifies the source container from, M from whatever it is to move it over to MP4. So if I go back to this torrents directory and grab the wizard and I open it, I'm going to grab... Ooh, it's got two audio tracks. That's pretty special. You don't see that very often. So you can pick one of the two. Uh, I would say stick with the AC3 because that's going to get you your 5.1 stuff. Leave the video on the pass-through. Leave the audio on the pass-through. And I you can pick whatever one you want right here. If you're shipping it out to an iPod, you can do that. Either one of those, or I usually do it to an Apple TV because that's the most native format for iDevices. Is just if you do it to an Apple TV 3, it also works for everything else. Puts it into M4V format, and you're good to go. Now, I'm only going to I was only going to run this to show you the, what the screen layout looked like. There's all kinds of other options in here if you want to modify these. I'm just giving you what I've had the best experience with. Uh, I'm not actually going to run this because it's already an MP4 or an M4V, I should say, which is the same thing as an MP4. You can literally change an MP4 to an M4V and it not not make a difference. Okay, so once we've got our file ready to go, it's converted into a file that we can manage. I want to introduce you to another application called Identify. This will be the best ten dollars you ever spend on the Mac App Store if you're into this sort of thing. Uh, it's purely a metadata populating utility for iTunes-based files, and uh, it's, you know, the Apple little logo, identify, or I naming moniker, I should say. Uh, here's what it does. Very simple. I grab this file, drop it into here, hit rescan, and it's going to go out and search the various databases, imdb, tvdb.org, all those sorts of places, and populate it. So luckily enough, it found, actually found it, uh, it looks like it's got the right cast in there, so we'll check a peek at the artwork. Hey, look, you got all these posters you can use. Apparently it was called Video Kid in another country. Uh, is that France? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we just, I usually leave it as a top one, whatever. Save the file. And you'll notice that the icon will change from the movie itself to the actual poster. So now we've got an M4V file that's fully populated with metadata. Let's close out of our thing here. The reason this is important, before we close out of it, notice that I'm not in the iTunes directory. I'm working out of kind of a working directory for managing torrents and where I shuffle things around if I need to run MP4 tools and stuff like that. This is not, I don't work directly out of the iTunes directory. I think things can get messy with naming conventions and all sorts of stuff, and it can junk up your iTunes really quickly. I tend to be a little bit more anal retentive about those sorts of things. You know, use it your own, at your own demise if you wish to. Uh, so our film is The Wizard, and we're going to tr move it into iTunes now. But before we do, I want to note that the copy files to iTunes media folder here is checked. The reason it's checked is when we drag this file into iTunes, it's going to move a copy of it into the iTunes folder for us. In addition to that, since we've got Keep iTunes Media Folder Organized checked, it's also going to put it into its own little special folder, keep track of all the information, this is more pertinent for things like uh, like music organization and whatnot. Uh, but it'll organize everything into artist folders, album subfolders, and uh, even other special content that, that comes along with it. But it does do some things for movies as well. Now if we drag this in to there. Oh, yep, probably got to close this first. There we go. Oh, oh there it goes. It's going to copy the movie in, and I'm going to get to watch The Wizard tonight and 
relive my childhood of playing Nintendo, running away from home, being chased by Fred Savage, all equally nightmarish in their own certain ways. So that's it, guys. That's a quick little video of the iTunes setup, MP4 tools, identify. Um, you can use several different things uh, to get your files. Uh, the way I prefer to do it is uh, for, I'll go to the bargain bin at either Best Buy or Walmart or something like that and buy the $5, $10 movie specials. And instead of pulling them out, putting them in the Blu-ray reader and doing a rip myself with one of the various tools that are out there, uh, I've found that I, it's just much easier to go download a torrent. Now, you're at your own moral peril and, uh, and risqueness when you, when you download torrents. Uh, you're the only one that has to sleep well at night, but I, I know that I don't use torrents unless I actually own something. Uh, I, the only time I'll ever open the disc, actually, is when I'm watching the extras or the commentaries. I, I love watching commentaries on movies. What I wanted to introduce you to is a gentleman named, or a person, I don't know if he's a guy or not, uh, named Wi-Fi. Y-I-F-Y. Uh, the reason I want to show you this one is because he does everything in MP4 formats. Uh, he has rips, torrents available of rips uh, for most movies. You can see some of the newer ones out here. Like I said, if you don't own a copy, uh, that's on you. Uh, I hold no, uh, no responsibility for you using this stuff if you don't. Uh, however, if you do own a copy of the movie, you are legally entitled to have a digital copy as well, whether that be from the disc itself or wherever you may get it, a rip, for example, or a torrent file. The reason this is important is because I've not been able to get a high-quality 1080p Blu-ray rip to be less than about 5 gigs. The reason Wi-Fi is rocks is because he's able to get them down, still maintaining the 1080p and the AC3 5.1 Dolby Digital Audio, under 2 gigs. I've not seen a file from him that's, well, okay, The Hobbit Extended was 2.3, I think. And that's a 3, three hour and 20 minute movie. Uh, so almost all of them are less than two gigs. I've not been able to accomplish that. He is a great source, uh, keeps everything up to date, and I highly recommend using that. You can also subscribe to an RSS feed that gives you all of his latest and greatest as he does that. So if you see one come across the wire that you have and you want to grab a digital copy, there it is. All right, so that's enough about the torrents. Uh, you can get the files, the digital files, from a various different sources, but this is the way that I, I do mine. Wizard should be done copying. Let's go back to the list. And we're scrolling. And where did it go, the wizard? There we go. Now I can watch it. Let's see if it'll play for us. And since we're screen recording, it's going to look like crap, but... Yay. Let's see if we can find the scene where he's playing Nintendo at the end. Hey, Super Mario 3, guys. Remember that? <laughs> all right, all right. That's enough of that. All right, guys. That's been iTunes on Synology. That's pretty much all you need to know over there. Uh, again, Synology does have the ability to host an iTunes server that interacts through the uh, your iDevices, and then you use AirPlay to proxy, uh, kind of as a proxy to get it onto your Apple TV. I run a Mac Mini with a NAS share connected off the Synology, and it works brilliantly. And I'll include a picture of, uh, of the Apple TV screen on my TV with all this metadata plugged into it uh, at the, in the blog post associated. If you like the video, give us a big thumbs up. Let us know what you think. And uh, if you have any further questions or any, uh, anything that I didn't cover that I missed that you're unsure about, uh, don't hesitate to ask. Get, shoot me a quick question or a Facebook comment or something and let me know which one you uh, or which question you have before you get started. Uh, this is Nick. Take care, guys.